Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome my beautiful community, the beautiful Bud Funding community to this today's live. I'm going live every day this week to support Earth Day. That is Thursday, April 22nd. And today I have a awesome guest with me, Erin Bird. And Erin is um, one of the members of Fair Trade Calgary, but she has also been part of our Bud Funding Expos in the past. So it's great to have you back with me, Erin. How are you today? Very well. Thank you so much for having me. And a little bit about Erin. So Erin is an engineer by day at the city of Calgary, but her second job and passion is to lead Fair Trade Calgary and raise awareness of the importance of fair trade. Fair Trade Calgary is a volunteer run venture with engineers without borders, Calgary Professional Chapter. And the group has been working hard over the last couple of years towards Calgary's Fair Trade Town destination. Erin is also an executive board member of the Canadian Fair Trade Network and is involved in other local volunteer initiatives, including Circular Economy Club, Calgary, um, and Fashion Revolution YYC, which she'll get into a bit later. And my name is Kristen Skelton. I'm the founder of Bud Funding. And to kick things off, Erin, um, I want to we want to dive right into fair trade because it's even myself. I find I don't um, I never learned anything about fair trade in my master's program, other than stuff I did on my own. It wasn't in, included in the the education. So I want to know what does fair trade mean and are all foods eligible to be fair trade? So um, yeah, and sometimes I find it's a little bit hard to describe uh, about fair trade because um, the term itself is very related to price. Uh, but fair trade is meant to be a bit more all encompassing too. And I find that people sort of interchangeably talk about the fair price versus the fair uh, value of a good uh, in, in different ways. So fair trade, the term is meant to be that there are minimum standards applied to the trade practices that happen. So the producer that is uh, working on getting you the, the product, what they're getting paid, the living conditions that they're working in, whether they're working in safe conditions, whether they have a voice in what they're doing. Uh, but then there's also the environmental aspect of it as well and having minimum standards to how the environment plays into the production of the product and then community benefit too. So making sure that fair trade is contributing to a thriving community. So even though you say fair trade and fair trade does sound like it's price only, uh, fair trade, the concept is more about holistically, how do you provide benefit to the people along the supply chain? Yeah, it's yeah, it's totally it's more of a holistic approach is what I'm hearing. And are all foods eligible to be fair trade? So all products actually are eligible to be fair trade. I know fair trade is, uh, you know, associated a lot with agricultural products. So food being the most uh, obvious one. And um, it started with uh, with food commodities and specifically food growing in developing nations. So so that's really the problem it was trying to address. And it, it started mm -hmm. um, almost as a result of the Second World War. People started to turn their uh, views towards how how are we exploiting developing nations and how can we have um, what they called alternative tr alternative trade organizations or alternative trade models. And that's kind of the fledgling way that um, fair trade got started was right after the Second World War. But then it, um, it developed and it kind of refined itself into there needs to be some sort of a certification process behind it. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a bit of auditing for the accountability piece. And that's where um, fair trade, the certification really started with the Max Hevlar. Uh, he was out of the Netherlands and he initiated this certification process that could be applied. And it was really only very recently in 1988 was when Max Hevlar started his certification. So, uh, you know, the term fair trade is actually a fairly recent 
uh, thing that was it was trying to bring uh, an equal voice to the producers and the people along the supply chain. Okay, okay, wow. So it's been around for a while then, hey? It's been around for a while. And though, and, and sorry, I didn't really answer your question, but to your point, like any type of agricultural product can be a uh, fair trade. However, not all of them are certified. And generally the focus has been on food that is uh, grown in developing countries. So, mm-hmm. you know, okay. you would look at coffee, chocolate, sugar, those types of um, commodities were the, the ones that are most likely to be fair trade. And what spurred your personal interest in fair trade and how did you get involved with fair trade Calgary? Well, um, I had really wanted to do something towards uh, just making the world a better place. I know that sounds like super corny, but (laughs) that's really what it was about. And I got involved in Engineers Without Borders because I am an engineer by profession, not really knowing what it was all about, thinking that it was going to be going to another country and you know, building a school or, or doing some sort of project overseas. Um, and, and then for, for circumstances, uh, you know, that just kind of played out in my life, I wasn't really able to do any sort of mission work where I would go to another country. But I realized that Engineers Without Borders also has a lot of local ventures that they're doing, where, you know, they do work in in uh, sub-Saharan African countries to empower um, entrepreneurs and businesses in those countries too. But they also have this local uh, focus on uh, what can we do locally to basically eradicate poverty? And that's their main goal. And I really, that really spoke to me. And then thinking about like, what can I get involved in here? And what's going to give me, um, I guess, thinking that I'm going to give the biggest bang for my buck in the effort that I put into it, fair trade um, kind of leapt out at me because it's something that we can do with every single purchase that we make. So it's an individual decision that each person has a power to make. And yet, if everybody made those decisions on a daily basis, the impact of it could be huge. And so that was, uh, that was really what struck me about fair trade and why I was like, Oh, man, I have to get on to this. And I have to understand a bit more how I can influence or encourage people to think about those choices that they're making every day. That's very cool. And which products are fair trade certified in Cal- uh, Canada, I guess? So uh, there are many different products that are certified and we have a whole roster of all of the products on our website. But some of the surprising ones that you might not think of are you can get fair trade roses in Calgary. So there is a supplier or distributor here, Florist Supply Company that um, or Florist Supply Limited, and they offer fair trade roses that they source from uh, Ecuador. So, um, you know, that's something surprising. Soccer mm-hmm. balls, soccer balls that are made in Pakistan can be fair trade certified. Um, you know, the, the the food products that you'll find in almost every store are fair trade coffee, fair trade chocolate, fair trade tea. You can find those in almost every store that you go to, including Walmart, including mm-hmm. Costco, Bulk Barn. So all you have to do is look for those that certification, which is telling you that it's um, a very robust third-party audited uh, certification system that is looking at both the environmental side as well as the social side and and also the community side. So if we're looking for a fair trade product, the way to ensure that the product is fair trade is just by having that little sticker on it. Yeah. And, you know, um, I could talk for hours about the different certification models that are out there because, yes, that one uh, sticker, the blue and green one, and Mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see it in black and white with the little waving hand is supposed to be it really is the gold standard of what certification bodies do because it's third party audited. They check so many different things uh, and they and they publish and make it transparent all of what they're measuring up to. But there are other certifications out there that are still trying to do something. They may not be doing it as robustly as Fairtrade International, but, you know, they're they're still trying to look at how do we improve from conventional practices. So I don't want to say that any certification is bad, but there are 
differences in where their focus is. And, you know, people talk about Rainforest Alliance. Rainforest Alliance, unfortunately, isn't a fair trade certification. It's more an environmental certification. But there's lots of certifications out there and it can be very confusing. We've tried to distill it down on our website and always happy to answer any questions from anyone on what the differences are between certifications that you might see or labels you might see. So if someone wanted to um, understand the differences, they could go to your website and then it would have a picture of a label and then the description of it in some cases. Uh, I should check to see if our website is totally up to date on that because there is a guidance document that we're hoping to post. Um, it's actually something that's been developed with the Canadian Fair Trade Network. So uh, that's coming. So maybe stay okay. tuned for that. Thanks. Yeah. And definitely when that comes, please post it in the group because that would be good to know. Sure. Um, and so in terms of uh, the farming, so does fair trade mean it's also orga an organic product? No, not necessarily. Okay. Um, I will say that for a lot of products, uh, the farmers that are growing those products in developing countries are seeing the real benefit with the organic movement. Like a lot of people are asking for organic. So you actually get better market value if you do grow organic and fair trade. So a lot of uh, farmers out there are doing organic just because it makes business sense to them. Uh, and so you're more likely to find a fair trade product that is also organic, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all fair trade products are organic. Okay, got it. That's a really good clarification. Um, and I know you mentioned a few stores. So if we are in Calgary, we can basically shop at any store and we can find fair trade products, or is there a specific store that has maybe more fa fair trade products that we could find over another? Yeah, you know, there are certain stores that have more, um, more selection, uh, I would say like the community natural foods, the blush lanes, uh, even spud the home delivery service, they they all carry uh, more fair trade uh, 10,000 or sorry villages Calgary, the store that used to be 10,000 villages Calgary um, has all, all pretty much everything in their store is fair trade. Even if it's not certified, they've done a proper vetting of all of the products there. Um, but yeah, for groceries, I mean, you can find fair trade at Calgary Co-op, at Safeway, at Costco. So um, it doesn't, although you may find more selection of fair trade in certain stores, it doesn't mean that you can't find fair trade in the store that you shop in. Right. So yeah, so that's great to know. So no matter what your budget is, um whichever store you go to you will have the option of purchasing fair trade if if you wish which we hope everyone does um and how much of what we pay for a particular item goes back to that maker or producer so it does all depend um yeah i saw your question and i was trying to find the exact like percentage and it was really hard for me to find the exact percentage of what goes to it there is a conventional banana game where you talk about what's what's the conventional amount that goes back to the farmer it ends up being like one thirtieth of the total cost of that banana goes back to the farmer so obviously it would be higher for fair trade there's a higher portion it may not be a lot higher portion and that's the thing like when you talk about uh producers that are working in developing countries uh, you know sometimes it's the very small amount incremental amount that actually brings them to a living wage or um, brings them to an amount that's actually going to cover the cost of production the nice thing with the fair trade international certification system is that they get a premium on top of the minimum price which is uh, to be invested in community initiatives and and it gets audited to make sure that it's being invested in community initiatives so even beyond just a living wage um, which, you know, some people think, oh, well, that minimum price really isn't providing a living wage, but there is additional premium that's going to benefit the community. Um, and it's it's something that's a little bit tricky because it gets evaluated across all these different countries and for each commodity a little bit differently. So the example I wanted to tell about mm -hmm. was coffee. So coffee, uh, like a dollar uh, a pound, I believe, is the conventional price and often the market fluctuates where it's less than a dollar uh, per pound um, but the price that fair trade would pay would be a dollar 40 for a pound of coffee and that would be a flat rate that wouldn't fluctuate depend 
no matter how the market changes. And if you were talking about organic coffee, you would get an additional 30 cents on top of that. So $1.70 per pound for that organic coffee. And that would be the base rate that wouldn't fluctuate for that. Uh, so really what Fairtrade's trying to do is provide a bit of a safety blanket so that as the markets fluctuate, when they go below what, um, you know, the price is to actually produce something, mm -hmm. the farmer is still actually able to survive or make a living or cover the cost that's really the intent of it and so a lot of people think that oh well that minimum price is way too low and we should be paying uh, the farmer a higher price well obviously if they're able to get more at market by going organic or by increasing the quality of the product they will be able to raise the price of their product based on the, the market. So, so that's something that's not everybody gets and it's sometimes hard to explain as well. And I, I hope I did it justice in this conversation. Oh, that's great. And if anyone has questions also, please put them in the comments and we can address them. I don't see any have come in just yet, but we can also, if you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay and put your questions in and we can answer them later. Um, so thank you so much for sharing all of that uh, intro to fair trade. Uh, you, there's so much to know and um, it just gives us more awareness. So once we know more, we can do better, right? So I know you have some awesome uh, Earth Day celebrations and events happening. So can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, uh, you know, first of all, I'm not sure how many people are aware, but this whole week uh, from April 19th to the 25th is actually Fashion Revolution Week. Mm -hmm. So it happens to coincide with Earth Week as well, uh, which is very, uh, makes a lot of sense because yeah. fashion has a great impact on the health of our Earth. So uh, I'm involved in Fashion Revolution YYC. Obviously, we're not able to do any in-person events, but we are doing a lot of virtual events. And so if you check out our Instagram, Instagram and Facebook pages. We're posting information on a daily basis. Um, you know, we had a different theme for each day. I've done a bunch of Instagram live interviews with people on Monday about ethics and fashion. So make sure you can still watch those on our IGTV. And we do have a session coming up through the Calgary Public Library for families to join and learn about fashion revolution and who made my clothes and what the seven R's of fashion are. So, mm -hmm. so make sure to register for that through the Calgary Public Library website. Um, and it's also available on Eventbrite. And then the other exciting thing that's going to happen tomorrow is I've been involved in um, it was a, a screening of the film 2040 mm -hmm. and our circular economy clubs uh, the chapters all across Canada participated in viewing the film having local discussions following the film and then doing a national discussion following the local discussion so each way along the way we were collecting input from people on their thoughts of on viewing the film which is very action-based very uh, motivational like what are the solutions that we can mm -hmm. implement today to get to a better future by 20 40. So we've taken all of those discussions and all of that feedback and we've come up with now some national commitment messages on actions that should be taken by Canadians uh, for Earth Day. So we're going to be publishing those on all our social media pages. I encourage you to like, like it if you see it, repost it, uh, try to get the word out. Let's get a bit of a ripple effect going where we're celebrating Earth Day by talking about actions that we're willing to take in moving to a more sustainable world. That's so great. And yeah, I watched 2040 this week and I was chatting with Aaron about it. What I really liked was that they listed lots of great solutions. It wasn't just doom and gloom. It was lots of great solutions. And I know that it's being uh, streamed live uh, or streamed. You can stream it free until tomorrow. Uh, people will be watching this after tomorrow. Is there a way that people could pay to watch it or is it on a certain platform? I'm just wondering how people could watch it after uh, tomorrow. Yeah, like if you go to the Vimeo site today, and I can provide you the link to it, you can actually save to watch later. And that way, you'll still have the film past today to watch later. Or, um, you know, if you miss miss seeing this until you know next week or whatever you can go to vimeo and just look up the film 2040 and i think it costs 5.99 to watch it so you can still pay to watch it as well after that and it's definitely worth a watch erin if people want to know more about fair trade how can they get in contact with you what's the best way 
So we do have a website, fairtradecalgary.com. Um, my email is fairtradecalgary at gmail.com. And we have social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So any one of those ways, uh, just direct message me or send me an email. And yeah, we'll, we'll answer any questions. Always happy to have discussions with anyone who has questions. I love hearing different points of view. So don't be scared of offending me. I, I, I want to hear what people are thinking. So feel free to reach out. That's great. I just want to say thank you everyone so much for being here with me today. I learned a lot and I hope you did too. And I will be live with you tomorrow when we'll be talking uh, about everything interior eco design. So thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Erin. Thanks. <laughs>